All right, I've got the slide up so you know you're in the right place. This is a big astronomy planetarium show and panel discussion right after you hopefully have just seen the big astronomy planetarium show. So if you have any comments about it, feel free to pop that in the chat as well. Um, I know the first time I saw a 360 planetarium show, I was really, really impressed. Um, I love that you can move around in it and that was just fascinating to me and I, um, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, so we have uh, a really great group of people here tonight. Um, you might notice that the themes of big astronomy were partially that it takes a lot of people to make this big astronomy happen and not just the people who are doing the astronomy at the observatories but also this team that brought you big astronomy. This We are part of who brings astronomy to you. So um, tonight I want to introduce part of our big team. Let's see, I'll just uh, have a quick rundown of who is involved. And it's uh, not everyone is here tonight, but a lot of people who made this show happen um, from conception to um, bringing it directly to you are here tonight. And I am thrilled to introduce some of them to you. And I'm gonna let them introduce themselves because I think they're better than I am. But um, We've got the California Academy of Sciences who made the show, uh, Ward Beecher Planetarium who is helping to distribute it, um, and Peoria Riverfront Museum who's hosting these amazing live events. This is more than just a planetarium show, this is an entire suite of activities and resources. So we're gonna let you know about some of those tonight. Um, the National Science Foundation uh, was our funder and we deeply appreciate their um, enthusiasm and trust in us to make this. The ASP uh, put together the hands-on kits and I'll show you where to get some of those a little later. Um, and the Abrams Pan Planetarium, you probably heard in the panel discussion, uh, the plenary this afternoon, Shannon Schmoll was here from the Abrams Planetarium uh, doing the research for this project. And AUI has been our fearless leader through this whole um, uh, interesting transition from the past two years. So I want to introduce everyone and I'm gonna actually let y'all introduce yourselves. Um, I'll start with Tim um, and I would love it if you could just tell me, tell everyone here your role in the project and maybe something that you learned along the way as we did this together. And you can pass oh. it to someone else when you're done. Okay. All right, great. Uh, my name is Tim Spuck. I'm the PI on uh, Big Astronomy on the project. And so my, my primary role is, is really to kind of um, stay in the background and try to really keep the big picture of the project in mind, um, how, all of the big, how all of the pieces are, are coming together and to sort of coordinate um, that process and ensure that I can facilitate uh, those activities in a way that free up everybody else to do their critically important job. And so I like to think of myself as more in a support role uh, for the great work that these folks are doing. And so let's go to Yasmin, I guess, since she's at AUI as well. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Yasmin Cadriteo. Um, I am working with Tim at AUI. And as the same as team, uh, I've been more in the background of the project. I've been mostly supporting the traduction of the materials and for the Spanish version of the show, including the show and also the educational kits and supporting a little bit of every, if they ask me for anything that needs to be in Spanish, um, I will do it and I will try to support that part. And now let's go with Renee. Uh, rookie mistake. I'm not a rookie, but I was muted. Um, I'm Renee Kerrigan. I am the planetarium director at the Peoria Riverfront Museum. 
and I uh, became involved in this project uh, in the beginning. I was lucky enough to go to Chile um, with the ASEP program, the Astronomy in Chile Educator Ambassador program, back in 2015 with both Shannon and Vivian, and that is where the sort of the dream for this project began. And um, Helped, helped with the creation of the grant. And now my main role is to coordinate the live events. So I hope you'll like us on Facebook, like Big Astronomy on Facebook, or sign up for our newsletter because we do about twice a month uh, Zoom, Zoom to Facebook live events somewhat like this that um, directly connect our, our viewers and our audience with STEM professionals who actually work at these observatories. The next one coming up is with Celia, from um, Alma, who you saw in the show. She was, is a, a data analyst from Alma, and she'll be telling us about her job and a little bit about her life. And so um, what I learned around, along the way is definitely how to be a good Zoom event host. <laughs> that is not a skill that I had before we started the project, and now I think I've become um, fairly good at it. Uh, so I'll go ahead and pass over to Ryan Wyatt. Well, hi, my name is Ryan Wyatt. I'm the Senior Director of Morrison Planetarium and Science Visualization at the California Academy of Sciences. And I had the honor of leading the team that uh, produced the show. Uh, so I wrote and directed the show and worked with uh, a, just a, an amazing crew. Talking about the, the big team that, that that is involved in creating this. Uh, I'm the only one representing this uh, amazing group of people that, that put the show together. Uh, but it was a huge learning process for us. We're a team that has typically worked primarily in computer graphics. We've done a little bit of work with cameras, uh, but this was a chance for us to really explore and learn a lot about capturing full down immersive footage uh, for, this, for, this, uh, for this story, because we really wanted to take you into these places, take you to these observatories uh, and introduce you to these the, the remarkable people who uh, are really the, the backbone of the show. Uh, so with that, I, I think I'll turn it over to uh, Shannon Schmal. Hi everyone, um, I'm, I'm Shannon Schmal. I'm the director of the Abrams Planetarium at Michigan State University. Um, and like Renee said, was an ASAP ambassador back in 2015. Uh, and uh, I, I remember, I think, talking to Renee about this project even on that trip. And so I'm very excited to see it come to fruition. Uh, my role on the project is um, I, I am research team lead um, and I, we have a team of four at MSU. So myself, uh, Professor Katie Hinko, Dr. Jessica Trucks is our postdoc and we also have a undergraduate student, Gloria Lopez, um, helping us collect all the data. Um, so um, yeah, here we go. What did you learn? All right, what did I learn? <laughs> um, I, I think the biggest thing I can say, um, we've, I've learned is just how amazing our team is and how quickly we were able to pivot and come up with um, really amazing ways of still getting the show out even after a very unexpected pandemic. Um, this is a very different um, way of distributing the show than we expected. What we planned on researching um, involved going to planetariums that would be showing the show and we can't do that anymore. So this was, um, everything had to change and it had to change quickly. Um, and I think, um, I, I think we've just learned a lot about how we can do that. And um, now we're learning on the research end, we're going to be learning a lot about how to uh, virtually deliver planetarium shows. Um, and I think will be, give us good lessons for the future. Did we get everybody? That was Except so for you, Viv. Oh, no, I'm asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Okay, I'm going to ask you, Tim. Uh, what do you think uh, is the thing you're most proud of about this project? What oh, is gosh, there's a lot of things. Um, but I, I definitely have to say, I'm going to give you two things because they're, they're both things that I'm very proud of. One of them is... Um, 
just this team, uh, this this group of people that you you have on the that are on the panel here, and you know Tiffany Stone Wolbrecht, who is who's not here, you know, and and others, the way that they have uh, responded to um, you know changes, a, a project like this, even absent COVID, uh, there are changes, there are challenges that you know we that we faced along the way. Um, all of those things, this team has really risen to the occasion. Uh, they've worked really well together. Uh, even when we get frustrated with each other, we, we still, you know, we can find our ways to express that frustration and, and we're able to, to move on. And, and so this is just, it's an amazing, amazing group of people uh, to work with. And I've said this before, I would work with this group any on any project because it's just, they're just phenomenal. Uh, I think the other thing content wise that I'm really super proud of is the way that um, the authenticity of the show, the way the show itself portrays um, the observatories and not just the observatories, but the people that are there and the spaces in which they, they, they exist. I mean, I've been to Chile. I've been very fortunate that I've been to Chile. I've been to the observatories a lot of different times. And I remember the first time I went to watch the show and I was like, I want to know if this show takes me there. I want to know if it takes me to the people that I know there. And I, I have to tell you that, yes, you know, Ryan and the crew at California Academy of Sciences did an amazing job of capturing the, just putting you there. And the, the authenticity of the film itself is just uh, incredible. Yeah, it's so true. This is a big love fest. We just all enjoy working together so much. It's really, really sweet. And um, so there are a lot of there. Well, there are a few questions already in the Q and A. If you all would like to ask the panel any other questions, make sure to put it in the Q and A, not in the chat, because sometimes with all the chat back and forth, those get lost. But I want to go ahead. Uh, and Matthew Winger is asking about when the Shan Spanish version will be available. So um, it is actually available now, but maybe Renee, would you like to talk about, um, or whoever would be showing that next? <laughs> Who's showing the Spanish version next? Because it is ready. Uh, you, if you would like to show the Spanish version of the film, you can do that right now. Um, we've actually, because we've reacted to COVID by enabling a live streaming of the film in 360 degrees on your institution's website. So if you are a planetarium or a museum and would like to do something similar to what you saw tonight, uh, you can do that by uh, finding all the materials that you need at bigastronomy.org. And that includes both the English and the Spanish version of the show. Uh, California Academy of Sciences did a wonderful job in filming this show in both English and Spanish. It's not that they took one version and translated it to another. They actually made a Spanish version of the show that was filmed in Spanish and has a Spanish script and it's, it's wonderful. Um, so you can uh, you stream it yourself, and we have streamed the Spanish version of the show on the Big Astronomy's YouTube channel, but I admit that it's been a little while. We plan to do it again um, around the new year, so we need to make sure, thank you for the reminder, I'll make sure to start making plans for uh, publicizing that um, soon. And then hopefully, uh, as the situation with the pandemic changes, planetariums around the world will be able to show the film in both English or Spanish. It is available free at bigastronomy.org. And I believe it's been translated into other languages already? So our German is the one that is a fully produced version and it was running at the Berlin Planetarium prior to uh, the, the planetarium closing, so. Great. And just, you know, for folks who want to sign up to get additional information from, as we do have a, a email sign up at the website, uh, bigastronomy.org, just go there and sign up and you won't miss any of the news that's coming out then. Absolutely. Um, so there are a few questions about the Vera Rubin telescope and um, and it was an interesting timing issue with filming, I know. So uh, there was a question about, will we add a little bit more about that for a future edition or um, uh, is that a possibility to add? I know that we have some people coming up and who will be doing some live shows 
uh, about the Rubin Observatory. Are there any other plans? So I guess strongly too, the sequel. Yeah. We'll to, um, unfortunately, yeah, we, we, we had a chance to visit the, uh, the rear ribbon site, uh, but the, the building was still very much under construction. So uh, the short and kind of unnamed uh, preview you get in the film is actually uh, computer generated. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it'd be, it would be great to, um, to go back for a sequel, I'd say. And I'll, I'll just mention one thing. One of the things you'll notice is that in the film, we don't mention LSST or Vera Rubin. That's because we knew that the name was going to change. And so we really couldn't um, identify the, the, the telescope. And so we had to be, we had to sort of tiptoe around that a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, stay tuned. There's another potential exciting project that might get built off of uh, this uh, big astronomy, something called Big Science. There's a maybe a TV series that's going to be coming out. Uh, we'll see how that goes over the next six months. Uh, but uh, if that happens, one of the first episodes will feature Ruben. So, and uh, just one more plug for learning more via um, our live events. We had a fantastic event featuring Dr. Amanda Bauer, who is the uh, interim director of the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. Um, and she has a background in public outreach. So she's a fantastic speaker and, and gave a great presentation on that observatory and all the science that it will enable. And you can find that on Big Astronomy's YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. So I know that's not uh, putting it into the planetarium show, but it is a way to learn more. And there are a lot of questions about how they could watch it again or send it to friends. And I know that you all know the answer to that. So I'll, I'll, I'll comment on that real quick. Um, we do have a HD version. So there's the 360 version that uh, you folks have been seeing streamed. We do have a, an HD version that's just basically a flat screen version. Um, we are working on a timeline for the release of that, and um, that's likely to come out very soon. Uh, so again, um, you know, sign up uh, on the at bigastronomy.org, and you'll be sure to get that information. And Ryan might have additional thoughts. Yes, we are actually at the California Academy of Sciences YouTube page and the Big Astronomy page. We're, we're doing a live uh, 360 broadcast of Big Astronomy every Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and it actually includes a brief uh, live segment as well. Uh, so it's, it's as close as we could get to what you would uh, maybe experience in the planetarium. And then I know, I believe Renee is also doing uh, a weekly live stream as well. Right, the Peoria Riverfront Museum's YouTube channel will be live streaming it in 360 every Thursday at 2.30 Central Time, at least for a few months. So uh, either Wednesday or Thursday, you have an opportunity to see a live stream of the show. Especially, I, there was someone in um, Europe who wanted to join this evening, but it was the middle of the night. So I think that'll be an easier show for them to catch. <laughs> um, I have a question for, uh, Yasmin, uh, you've been such a, an essential part of this project. What do you feel that you wish people would take away from the project? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think uh, one of them, I would like that people uh, the see the show, especially the young ones, uh, see themselves represented on the show. Um, I hope they can feel excited about science and uh, see the possibility that even if you don't like uh, physics or you don't want to, stu to study astronomy, there are other ways that you can contribute to science and to these big, um, huge uh, places where science happens. And sometimes when you are young and you are trying to figure it out what to do on the future and you know that you like science but at the same time you you think that you might not be really good doing astronomy but you like engineer so then uh, seeing the show and seeing the different professionals that we are streaming there 
uh, they will say, okay, maybe I, even if I'm not good in physics I, or I'm not good in this specific topic, I can still uh, have the shot to get and work on one of these facilities. So I think that's one of the things that I hope the people get from, from the show. And also um, uh, as a teacher, the, I hope all the people that work with the students or even in your home, if you have kids, you can go to the website and you will find a different type of resources that you can use and do this more, uh, it's more like a full, um, how can I say it, uh, learning experience from the show. Uh, watch the show and also get the educational materials that we have there and do the fun activities that we have. That is great. That's a perfect introduction because I wanted to mention that there is a teacher guide that um, Shannon and I'm sorry that Renee and her team put together and we've also got the informal education activities uh, that are part of the Night Sky Network materials now and those are all online. You can find them at thebigastronomy.org. Um, those are great for doing informal activities and the, some of the themes were on um, astronomy uh, legends from around the world. We have um, multi-wavelength astronomy. We tried to get multi-messenger astronomy in there, but that was a tough sell to amateur astronomers. Um, and uh, so, and we've got lots of different pieces on wavelengths. And um, so I wanna just encourage you to go there if you'd like to, uh, do some activities around those topics. Um, let's see, there's a question from Tom Vassos in here that says, is all the content on the site Creative Commons and royalty free so we can use in the classrooms? It's a good question. We want you to use everything. <laughs> I'm gonna let Ryan comment on uh, anything that might be on California Academy of Sciences. Uh, but yes, as a standard rule of practice for AUI, we use uh, Creative Commons, um, so. It, because we haven't uh, released the HD version and such yet, we uh, kind of haven't made a specific decision around that, um, but, uh, but we will most likely be following the AUI protocols. So um, that's a, that's a great question. And, um, and the Creative Commons licensing is uh, certainly feasible. Um, with the Planetarium show as a whole, we're hoping that the show as, a, as an immersive experience maintains its integrity as a, as a full length product so that that would be a little more restrictive uh, but in, uh, in terms of clips and, and other uses, uh, we, we want to see it leveraged as much as possible. So, And there are HD clips of the show available for as educational resources already. Uh, it's just the show in its entirety is not yet available as HD. And there was a great question about the Astronomy in Chile Ambassador Program. Uh, astronomy Educator, hey, give it to me, Tim. <laughs> ASAP is what we call that. ASAP. Astronomy and Chile Educator Ambassadors Program. Yes, ASAP. <laughs> this is what started this entire project and it's still going and it's an amazing program and I encourage all of you to apply next time the applications come out when we can travel again. Um, but Tim, tell us about it. Yeah, so ASAP uh, basically uh, selects uh, some of the best uh, astronomy education and outreach professionals uh, in the United States and takes them to Chile uh, for a really intensive behind the scenes experience. And uh, you get to meet a lot of really cool people, see some amazing places, enjoy some excellent Chilean wine, uh, Pisco sours and uh, excellent cuisine. And uh, it's uh, it really has been just an um, amazing uh, experience. I know for, for me as, as PI on that project as well, um, just the people that have come together and the groups uh, that have come together and the things that they do after that experience. I do wanna stress you know, one thing in the, the last couple of years, last few years, we've taken a Chilean, an embedded Chilean, and we uh, took Yasmin, uh, I believe in 2018, and then we just didn't let her go. She 
you know, came back on the airplane to the United States. No, not quite that, but uh, she, you know, she did, <laughs> she did make it, uh, make it back and uh, continues to work with AUI. And that's been a really positive uh, outcome out of, out of ASEP. And today I'll just, I'll let folks know, we did have three more years of funding that was granted by NSF to continue the program. So we do have our cohort that was selected for 2020. Unfortunately, they of course are not traveling. So that's likely to just get moved over into 2021, which means we'll have a 2022 cohort and a 2023 cohort. And the new program is actually opened up, not just to those in the US, but opened up uh, internationally as, as well. The US slots are funded by NSF. The other slots are funded uh, in another, through another mechanism. And we would all highly recommend it, I have no doubt. Um, yeah. yeah, so we should say that Viv, Yasmin, uh, Shannon, Renee, and those of, of you who know Tiffany, and if Tiffany's not on here, uh, all of you, and, and actually, I guess our California Academy of Sciences <laughs> connection, not Ryan, but Josh, uh, those were all ASEP ambassadors. So this is a program that very much evolved out of this, this group. Are there any of you on the um, participant list who are also ASAP ambassadors? Shout out. Um, I imagine that's true. Yeah, Christine is here. Excellent. And Carmen. Carmen's here. Okay. Yeah, so we have quite a few astronomy and Chile ambassadors that were embedded among you. Um, so Art. Art. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excellent. There have been... Um, babies born and anniversaries celebrated and we've worked together through thick and thin through the pandemic and we are um, really thrilled to finally bring this to you our community um, it's really wonderful to have been here with you and I know we started a little bit late so I don't want to keep you too long but I, it's past seven o'clock for me which means it's past 10 o'clock on the east coast and even later in Chile but I really want to thank all of you for coming. And um, and Shannon, were you going to give anyone a link? Did you want to talk about that before we go? Nope, sorry, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, coming right up. Um, it's part of a big research program. So Shannon uh, is doing research uh, and her team are doing uh, research to see um, how all of the pieces fit together. So I want to thank you all. Um, for uh, you know how important research is when you're doing a big NSF project. So she's gonna put that in the link. Um, so it's a bit.ly slash big astronomy with a capital B and a capital A. Um, if you could just take a few minutes. Oh, you can tell him, Shannon. <laughs> Yeah, so this is um, a link to our survey re uh, regarding the planetarium show itself. Um, and so if you could fill that out, we would really appreciate it. And also by filling it out, you are entered into an a $10 Amazon gift card. So um, it would also help us out. So thank you. I want to thank you all so much. And thanks to everyone who is joining from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific meeting today. I hope you had a great first day. We're looking forward to tomorrow, another full day and um, a lot of great presentations. If you have any needs um, between here and tomorrow morning, you can reach us at meeting at astrosociety.org. So have a wonderful evening and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Viv.